Hi there. All right. Welcome to your pre-lesson video on ratio, proportion, and percent. So as usual, we're going to go over the terminologies first. So ratio is defined as the relationship that compares the relative size of two amounts, right? So you might see ratios written with a colon. So example, like two colon five, or you could also write it as a fraction, two over five. And what these two mean, um, if it's translated into words, is two to five. And so, yeah, ratios, you could write it in three ways. You could write it with a colon, as a fraction, or with words, right? And so normally ratios, they compare a part to a part or a part to a whole. So it really would depend on how the question is worded. All right, and then the next thing that we have is unit rate. So unit rate is defined as a ratio that is used when comparing two different kinds of quantities which have different units, right? So uh, what this shows us is that how one unit corresponds to a another unit, all right? And so an example would be like, uh, let's take physics. So we know like one atmosphere is equivalent to 760 tor, right? This is physics, by the way. So the ratio of one atmosphere is equivalent to 760 tor. And how we will write that is as one atmosphere over 760 tor, all right? Or if we write it as words, it'll be one atmosphere to 760 tor, all right? And normally, in order to answer questions like this, we would set it up as ratios or proportions, which we will get in a second um, to solve how one quantity would shift to another if one thing changes, all right? And then the next thing that we have are proportions. So proportions um, are just, you know, two ratios that would equal to each other. And so they are an efficient way to solve, you know, certain problems. But just, you know, when you're setting up, setting them up, you have to be careful because if you set them wrongly, then um, the answer will be wrong, right? So watch the units of each piece um, of the proportion. This is really, really critical, right? So like how we would write it, for example, is like, we know that, let's take the thing from example. So one atmosphere is equivalent to 760 tor, right? And say the question is, find the number of atmospheres. So let's put question mark atmosphere. If our tor is now 500, see how these are paired. Right? So just make sure when you are writing your units um, that they are pieced together correctly. And you'll get used to this as we go through more practices. But essentially, this is how you would set up like proportions. All right. And we'll have practice in a second. Now, the next thing that we have is percent. All right. So percent is defined as a proportion that means per 100, right? And we know that the max of a percent is 100%. All right, so percents, we can write them as a decimal. So it'll be to two decimal places, right? So it'll be like, say we have 30% is equivalent to 0 0.30. We could also write percent in terms of fraction um, but if it's a fraction, it's over 100. So let's take 30% again. So it's going to be like 30 over 100 because we know in a percent, the max that we can go is 100. So that's how we would write it um, as a decimal and as a percent. We'll actually get into um, just a second on how to convert back and forth. All right. So yes, essentially a percent is per 100. You can write it to two decimal places or over, um, or over 100 as a fraction. All right. And then some tips that you could use when you're dealing with fractions is that some things to remember, like a 
percent. If you multiply it with the whole, right, you only get part of it. So it's part. So you're not going to get the whole 100%. That can also equal to, see, percent is the same thing as part over whole times 100%. Percent can also be found in percent change. And we'll actually also get into that in a second on the formula for percent change. All right, now moving on. Okay, converting fractions to percents. Let's take a fraction. So let's take it as 5 over 7 times. All right, so whoops, not times. So our fraction is 5 over 7. All right. Now, in order to change it into a percent, obviously, you probably saw, we're going to multiply all of this by 100%. We're going to quickly just put that into a calculator. So 5, oh, five over 7 times 100% is going to give us... 71 and 3 seventh percent, which is the equivalent of 71.43 if we round it to two decimal places. All right. Now, vice versa, let's say we are given 8%. Say we are given 37.5% and we are asked to convert it into a fraction. So, as we know, um, percents are per 100. So, we're going to just Put this as 37.5 over 100 and now we're going to simplify everything because it can be simplified right and so once we simplify everything we are going to get 3 over 8 and that's how you convert percent to fraction make sure it's in the simplest form all right Now, the next thing we have is decimals to percent. So same thing. So now with decimal, let's say we have 0 0.125, right? If we want to find it, what this is in percent, we're just going to multiply everything by 100. 100%. And so that's going to give us 12.5%. All right. So if you're given decimals, we just multiply it by 100 instantaneously into a um, uh, percentage, right? Another example is like 1.437. Same thing, multiply by 100, it should give us 143.7%. All right, now for the opposite, let's say we're given a percentage, say we are given Let's see, let's go 4.37%. 4, 4. Now, in order to convert it into a decimal, we're just going to divide everything by 100, right? So let's do 44.37 divided by 100, and that's going to give us 0 0.4437. All right, and then this part is extremely important as we do discounts and sales tax in a bit. All right, if you have any questions about this, bring it to your deep dive lesson. Now, the next thing we have is percent change. So a simple formula I would say for percent change is this. So percent change is equal to the final amount minus initial amount divided by the initial amount times 100 percent all right now just remember sometimes the question they don't give you the sign so they say what's the percent change um, occasionally you might need to give a sign. So let's say the 
fine, um, initial amount is uh, $12. And then it became $9. That means your percent change is going to be a negative percentage. And there's sometimes they might ask you to give it with the sign. So like in this case, it will be, let's see. So in this case, it would be like a negative 25% change, right? Sometimes they ask you for the sign, sometimes they don't. Just be aware. As long as you know how to do the calculations, it's fine. There's occasionally also where it'd be like, yeah, it's a 25% change and it's decreasing, right? In this case, see, there's no negative here. You wouldn't need to say decrease. It really depends on what the unsaid options are given, but essentially the more most important part is this formula. This is the formula you will want to use when you're trying to find percent change. All right. Now, discount and sales tax. With discounts and sales tax, what you would need to do is first find the difference, right? So let's say you're given a discount of 30 percent right that means your price after discount is going to be 100 percent minus 30 percent which would be 70 percent right and so now in order to find the price you would need to do Let's convert that to decimal. So it would be like 0 0.7 times whatever price you're given, right? And then this final amount here would be your sales price. All right. Sometimes in questions, they ask you, what is the discount or how much is the discount? If they ask you how much is the discount, then obviously you're just going to do like in this case, convert 30% already. So we have 0 0.3 times something. And then this would be your discount amount. All right. And then now with sales tax, what they would normally say, okay, maybe your sales tax is um, 7% after discount. So what you would need to do is take the sales price times the percent. So in this case, it'll be 0 0.07. And from there, you would get the, oops, you would get the sales price after sales tax. Actually, my bad. You would not get the sales price after um, the tax. My bad, my bad. From here, you would just get how much the um, sales tax amount is. Now to find the sales price after sales tax. All right, what we're going to do is take the sales price, add it to the tax that we found right here. Let me change the color. So the tax is the amount. The tax is the amount that we found here, right? So we're going to add those two together, and then that will give us our final price. All right, we'll actually go through some practice questions in a bit um, on how to do this. Now, the next thing we have is simple interest. So the uh, so when you're answering questions about interest, read really carefully because sometimes it will say simple interest or compounded interest. And there are keywords where it will literally actually say simple interest or compounded yearly or compounded monthly. Right. So let's look at simple interest first. So. Just memorize the formula. So I stands for the interest amount. 
or the amount of interest in terms of dollars. P is your principal, which is the starting amount. And this is normally also in dollars. R is your rate. And you will give that as a um, decimal in percent. So your percent in decimals. Or you can also leave it as fraction, but make sure it's just over 100, all right? And then you have T, which is your time, and that's usually in years, all right? So just memorize that formula and what all these means in order to find simple interest. Now with compound interest, let's take a look. So A is the final amount. P, again, is your principal. R, again, is your rate. And you would normally leave this. Actually, this one, yes, definitely leave it in decimals, so percent in decimals. N is the number. Actually, these two are N. Right, so there's a number of times um, it's number of times it's compounded in a year. And again, T is your time in years. All right, now some vocabulary you would need to actually memorize for this is. Well, at least for N, right? Help you. So, annually is one. Semi annually is two. Quarterly is four. Daily is 365 because 365 days and weekly is 52 because there are 52 weeks in a year all right so these are just some general terms that will be helpful to remember if you're dealing with compound interest all right all right now on to some example questions so the ratio of x to y is 5 to 2 right so we know that x over y is equivalent to 5 over 2. So now we know that y is 12. What is x? So what we can do here is, again, we can cross multiply and find out what x is. Actually, we don't even need to cross multiply now that I look at it. We want x by itself and it's already on top. So what we need to do is just multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which is 12, All right? So that means 5 over 2 times 12 is equivalent to 30. So x equals 30. Can you see that? That's how you would set up for ratios. It's also This can also be counted as a proportion, All right? Now the next thing we have is x minus 1 equals uh, x minus 1 over y minus 2 equals to 3 over 5. And we know that y is equivalent to x plus 3. So this one is a little bit of substitution that you will learn um, when we get into systems of equations. But let's write down the equation as it is right now. And then we'll show you how to quickly solve it. So we're going to substitute y with x plus 3. So it's going to look like x minus 1 x. x plus 3 minus 2 equals to 3 over 5. Open the parentheses and group all the like terms. You'll get x plus 1 equals to 3 over 5. Fractions. Let's cross multiply. That's going to give us 5x minus 5 equals to 3x plus 3. Group all the like terms. So we're going to subtract 
3x, take that 3x, add 5, add 5. All right. Boop. So now that's going to give us 2x equals 8. Isolate x by dividing 2 on both sides. So x would equal to 4. And that will be the solution. All right, if you have any questions, again, bring it to your deep dive lesson. Now, aha, uh -huh, unit rate. So let's look, 28.35 grams. Remember, write your units because it helps you keep track of where you are. Because in the end, if you don't get, if you don't, if you are not able to cross out the units that you don't need, and the only unit you have is the one that you're trying to find, that's not the answer. So in the end, by your answer, when you're crossing out everything, you should only have grams in this case, all right? In an ounce, that means in one ounce, make by your units. How many grams are in things? So let's put this as question mark, G. So we're trying to find a question mark, three ounce, right so now we're going to mul cross multiply actually we're not cross multiply we're going to get rid of this right so we're going to multiply this by three ounce as you can see so now we are going to get is it 28.35 times three so question mark g is the same as 80 5.05 grams and here like I said the units will cancel out with each other all right so that means in three ounces there are 85.05 grams and that's how you would work out unit rate problems or proportion problems like this make sure you write your units they're very important all right now for sales text so let's look if a person paid 2.80 in sales tax, so this is the amount of sales tax for a pair of shoes with a tax rate of 4%, what was the cost of the shoes before tax? All right, so how we would set up this question is, let's see, we know that it is going to be 4 over 100 because of the percent, multiply with we don't know how much right this is the cost of the shoe before the tax we know that four percent of this is going to be 2.80 now in order to find what x is we are going to again multiply both sides butterfingers there oops we're going to multiply both sides oh why is that dangling Hold on, slide thing. Hold on, stupid pen. Ah, oh, technology sometimes. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. Don't know why my pen suddenly decided to scribble and have a life of its own. But anyways, now we're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 4 over 100, which is 100 over 4, right? So multiply, multiply. So obviously this crosses out with each other. You have x equals to, let's see, 2.8 times 4 over 100. I mean, sorry, 2.8 times 100 over 4 is 70. Right, so that means the cost of shoes before tax is $70, all right? And then the next thing that we have, percent change question. So which of the following has the greatest percent change? So in this case, we would need to test all of them. So let's look at A first. So let's look, initial, Right, so 24,000, sorry, it's final minus initial. So, it, let's see, percent change. There we go. It's going to be 
30,000 minus 24,000 divided by 24,000 times 100 percent. And so that is going to give us, let's see, a 25%. And let's also write, it's an increase. All right, so now let's look at B, because we're going to do all of this to see which has the greatest percentage. It doesn't matter if it's an increase and decrease. In this case, we're just looking at the value, right? So here, percent change is going to be 50 minus 70 divided by 70 times 100 percent and that is going to give us let's see mm -hmm. that is going to give us like a 28.57 percent change and this is decrease all right so we know now a is definitely not a possible answer because um 28.57 is a bigger value than 25 right so now let's look at c percent change is equal to 50,000 minus 60,000 over 60,000, because that's the initial amount, times 100%. All of that is going to equal to, let's see, negative 10,000 divided by 60,000 times 100 is going to be negative Actually, let's put the negative sign. So it's just going to be like 16.67% and it's a decrease. All right. So that means looking for our, um, all our answers here, which has the greatest percent change, B does. All right. If any questions about this, as usual, Oh, actually, went up from, so actually, if we look at this, this is the initial, this is the final. So actually, if we quickly look at C, numbers and all probably wouldn't change. Actually, we would change a bit. So that's why people read the questions carefully. So let's quickly actually do that again. <sighs> So it's 60,000 minus 50,000 divided by 50,000, because that is the initial amount, times 100%. All of that will equal to, let's see, 10,000 divided by 50,000 times 100 is going to be 20 percent and it's an increase so answer still hasn't changed but the value of the percent change did all right does that make sense all right the last question simple interest so as you can see it says simple interest here it means we know the formula is going to be i equals p or t we're trying to find an interest amount that we're going to get Right, so we know the principal is going to be 3,000. Our rate, once we convert this, it's going to become 0 0.05, right? So 0 0.05, and the time is in four years. Let's put all of that into our calculator. So 3,000 times 0 0.05 times four, is 600. So that means the simple interest that we're going to get after four years with an annual rate of 5% is $600. All right, so that's it for your pre-lesson on ratio 
portion and percent. Have a good rest of your day.